Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now when we talk about the GPUs inside of Android smartphones, we talk about uh, Qualcomm's Adreno, we talk about ARM's Mali GPUs, and that's about it, it's a two horse race. However, there is another designer of GPUs for Android and that is Imagination with their Power VR GPUs. And they've just announced a brand new series of GPUs called the A series. And they really are taking the fight directly to Qualcomm and to ARM in terms of performance and in terms of power efficiency. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so Imagination was the sole supplier of GPU technology to Apple right up to and including the Apple A9 processor. Then things went a bit wonky. There was maybe some cross licensing. It was very, very messy. But basically Apple and Imagination are today uh, going their separate ways. I've got a whole video about the history of the PowerVR GPU, how you understand their naming and so on, and I'll leave a link to that in the description below and probably in a card here somewhere at the top of the video. But now they've brought out their latest GPU, which is the A series, which follows on from the 9 series. So they had the 6 series, the 7 series, the 8 series, the 9 series, now they've gone to the A series, and they tell us that next year's GPUs will be called the B series, than the C series and so on. So this is a new way of naming and a new GPU architecture with greater performance and greater power efficiency. Okay, let's start with the really big top level number that Imagination are putting out. And that is that their GPU, this new A series GPU can be up to 2.5 times faster than current shipping power VR GPUs. Well, let's break that down a little bit. First of all, current shipping GPUs means GPUs that are actually in devices today. And of course, the reason you say that is that all GPU manufacturers, including ARM, including Imagination, can build GPUs with different numbers of cores. They can multiply up the technology. So they can say, yes, if you want a 32 core version of our GPU, you can have it. But of course, that may not work in the power budget, in the battery constraints that you have inside a mobile phone, but it might be okay for a Chromebook. So there are different ways of slicing up. So current shipping means what you get today in let's say a smartphone and it's 2.5 times faster. And that's a pretty impressive number. Imagine if your boss said to you, your salary has been increased by 2.5 times. You'd be like, ooh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you very, very much. So this is 2.5 times performance which is pretty amazing. So the way Imagination have managed to achieve this is by some changes in the internal design of the GPU. Another big number they're giving out is that in the new GPU design, you can have four times as many ALUs as arithmetic logic units, and we'll talk more about those in a moment. They're also saying that the AI processing power has gone up by eight times, and that the overall power budget has gone down by 60%. So again, these combinations of numbers are fairly impressive, but we need to look at them in detail. So in the new Imagination series, they've moved away from their previous design of 32 pipelines to 128 pipelines. Now, what does that mean? Well, inside a GPU, you're basically doing lots of 3D transformations. You've got this game that you're playing in a 3D world. You have a point of view, which is the camera. And as that gets moved around, the objects need to get rotated, transformed, zoomed in and out, and so on. And that's all done using matrix multiplication. So inside of a GPU is actually a very, very fast multiply and add unit. What it can do is it can multiply two numbers and then add them to an accumulator. Imagination call that a MAD, multiply add. Other companies might call it an FMA, fused multiply add. But it's basically the same thing. You want to be able to do lots and lots of points all around the screen, multiplies and adds very quickly. And then there's a second stage, which is the shading, which again needs to use these uh, multiply adds to work out the colors of the different pixels on the screen. So the more multiply adds you can do, the greater performance you have. It's as simple as that. But of course, multiply adds, it's circuitry, it takes battery. If you're running lots and lots of them, it's gonna take more and more battery. So you wanna be able to do this in the most power efficient way. And so in the new design, they've basically worked out that if you move to this 128 wide processing pipeline, 128 operations can come down this pipeline at one time, and that's two multiplies, so it's actually 256 numbers going down these pipelines. If you do that in a very simplistic method, kind of brute force it through, you can actually reduce the complexity while increasing the performance. Now the way Imagination divide up their GPUs is using ALUs, arithmetic logic units, and each of these is 128 pipelines wide, as I've just said, and each scalable processing unit, 
other companies might call it a core, each scalable processing unit has two ALUs. So you get two ALUs in each core, in each scalable processing unit, and then each version of the GPU can basically have more and more of those scalable processing units. So every GPU maker tells its customers, that's of course chip makers, what configuration do you want, how much performance do you want, and how much power efficiency do you want, and that means they choose how many ALUs they want inside of these scalable processing units, and then you can add all those together to give you a number for performance and for efficiency. Now the top level one that Imagination are offering in the A-series is the AXT2048 2048, and that has two teraflops of uh, floating point operations and 64 gigapixels per second. Now that's the kind of GPU you might find in say a Chromebook, possibly a tablet, probably a bit bigger than what's necessary in a smartphone in terms of battery efficiency, but certainly something with a slightly bigger battery, this is their premium GPU. Still mobile we're talking here, no fans and you know, kind of you know, main supply here, battery operated mobile devices, this is their flagship GPU. Now for a flagship smartphone, they're talking about the AXT32102 and that has one tera uh, flops of operations, 32 gigapixels a second, and four tops when it comes to AI performance. And that's the kind of one they're aiming at the high-end smartphone uh, market because the power efficiency and the performance will be on par with what's needed in that market segment. And we're gonna break down the internal design of these different combinations in just a moment, but they keep bringing them down in size until you get to the very, very smallest one, which they're claiming is the world's smallest Vulcan compatible GPU for 3D, 3D gaming, okay? And that is the AXE 116, 16 gigaflops of operations, uh, one gigapixel per second, but it is the fastest Vulcan capable GPU in its class. So if we look at the uh, diagram of that top-end GPU, we can see that it has four scalable processing units, and each of those processing units has uh, two ALUs. And when you add up all those numbers, you get 128 plus another 128, and then you've got four of those, so that gives you eight lots of 128 pipelines. But remembering that's two 32-bit numbers, floating point numbers, coming down each of those pipelines, so that's actually eight times 256 operations, and that's where you get this number, the 2048, the 64, 2048, 64 gigapixels, 2048 in terms of its processing power. And then you can see as we go through the different models I mentioned, you reduce the number of ALUs, you reduce the number of scalable processing units, and that then reduces the overall performance, but of course changes the power efficiency. And then a GPU a chip maker who wants to include this GPU can then pick what size of ALUs, what size of GPU they want, so they can then hit their target market. Now, a couple of other things worth mentioning about the new A-series GPU from Imagination. One is it includes uh, Imagination's hyperlane technology. Now, we're used to, on the CPU side, the operating system having different tasks that it wants to run. So, you know, you could be running you know, the background checking of your email, it could be receiving a WhatsApp message, it can be running the UI, all this is going on in parallel because there are many cores and the OS is able to do multitasking. But that isn't really something we see very often in terms of GPUs. But with hyperlane technology, imagination allow uh, chip makers to divide up the resources of the GPU in one of two ways. First of all, you can actually say, well, I want half of the GPU to do this thing and half of the GPU to do the other thing. Now that might not be so important in terms of, let's say mobile, but if this GPU is going to other things, let's say like a GPU inside of a car, then obviously you want to be able to split the GPU to say this part does the dashboard, this part does the infotainment unit, you know, and so on and so on. As we get through more screens in our cars, they all need user interfaces, they all need to display maps and all kind of stuff like that. And you can also divide it to say not only half, you can say one quarter or one third goes over there. And so the infotainment unit gets less power, whereas the dashboard or the GPS unit might get more power. Not only can you divide up the GPU in terms of physical a quarter goes to this, you can actually say in terms of performance, I want to guarantee 60 frames a second for this particular task and anything that's left over can go to this task. So again, we go back to the idea of a car with many screens. Of course, you want the 
dashboard with the speed on it, you know, to come up in real time, smooth display. But if the infotainment unit lags by one or two frames, well, who cares because that's just displaying the music that you're playing. So again, you can divide up the CPU in terms of its overall performance, not just physically. And they actually have a scheduler built in, which we'll talk about in a moment, that allows these different tasks to be scheduled onto the GPU. But more than that, it can do the same thing with AI tasks. So now when we're getting a course into VR, AR, computational photography, you wanna be able to use the GPU to be able to do GPU-like things. Again, if we're talking about AI, for, uh, AR, for example, showing you all the things overlaid on the real world picture, but maybe you also want some machine learning going on in here. So you can say, well, actually, I'd like a portion of the GPU tasks to be given over to machine learning. So it's running machine learning and standard GPU tasks at the same time using this hyperlane technology. And why it's really important is that when it's hyperlane technology, it actually means that the memory is separate. So this means you can do security related things with your GPU, with the AI, and you know there isn't gonna be any leakage of data across the different tasks that are operating on the GPU. Now to handle the GPU in such an advanced way with hyperlane technology, also to handle things like the cooling the statistics, any debugging that you do during development, uh, external signals maybe to other parts of the SOC to say something is going on in terms of performance, in terms of heat, in terms of other things you might want to signal, general purpose input output pins, all of this is handled by a microprocessor that's built into every GPU. So every GPU actually has its own microprocessor that runs its own firmware. Now up until recently, recent years that is, of course, imagination owned MIPS. So any such microprocessor would probably have been written using a MIPS architecture. But now MIPS got sold off after the whole Apple thing. Again, go and see my video if you want to know more about that. And so now they've chosen a new micro architecture for that GPU, but they're not officially revealing what that micro architecture is. But if you look at other announcements around Imagination's work, you will see they're getting very cozy with some RISC-V uh, manufacturers and with the RISC-V organization. So I'll leave it to you to guess which microcontroller you think is inside of every single uh, A-series GPU. Now, when it comes to the size on the silicon, of course, that's very important because silicon uh, chips are hard to make, not the raw materials, not the silicon, that's just sand, as some people point out, but actually the manufacturing process, every square millimeter costs more money. So the less uh, space you use up on your uh, chip, on the die for your GPU is better. And Imagination have got a diagram here showing their processor, their GPU compared to Qualcomm's Adreno compared to a Mali, probably a G76, I would guess. Okay, and you can see that in terms of size and performance, Imagination are claiming they can either make a GPU that has the equivalent performance or an even better performance, but in both cases smaller and therefore cheaper and also therefore more power efficient. Now that is a bold claim. And I'd like to see that tested in a, a real uh, device so we can actually put it through its paces to see what it comes out like. That is an interesting claim. And when we're talking about the future, as I mentioned right at the beginning, this is the A series coming next year, 2020, probably around the same time frame, end of 2020. We're gonna see the B series and they're claiming they're going for a 30% performance boost. Then the C series will come after that, again with more performance boost. And not only that, they're saying, and this is gonna be really interesting, for 2020 there's gonna be an announcement for the B series which will include hardware enabled ray tracing. And this is something that has been very much in the desktop market at the moment, and there's lots of interesting developments with that, but Imagination have been doing hardware ray tracing now for a long time. Again, see that other video that I made. And so they're saying that the new B series is gonna have hardware enabled ray tracing. So that's a really exciting thing to look forward to at the end of 2020. So talking about 2020, when are we gonna see devices? Well, in 2020, obviously, because there's only a few more days left of 2019. So Imagination have said they've shipped the designs to some of their partners already. They are in the process of making chips that will go into smartphones that we will see in 2020. And I'm really looking forward to seeing them. And I really wanna get my hands on one, put it through Speedtest G to see how well this GPU really works. 
Okay, so there you have it. My name's Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget I'm launching a newsletter, the Gary Explains newsletter. Do go over to GaryExplains.com and type in your email address over there. Other than that, if you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a like. Please consider subscribing and uh, I suppose that's it. I'll see you in the next one.